Recently, I picked up a Geiger counter. This one I just picked off of uh, Amazon. I had been it looking for one for a while, um, and this one was on sale at the moment, so I thought I would pick it up. This uh, Geiger counter, from what I understand, picks up m uh, most alpha and beta radiation. Now, what Geiger counters actually pick up is the the ionizing um, radiation off of radioactive material. And from what I I only have a precursory understanding of how a Geiger uh, counter works, but there's basically a device in there that when it is hit by that radiation, it uh, for like a set like for fraction, it creates like an electrical charge and that device itself is connected to basically a speaker. And so that electrical charge triggers that speaker. And that's why when you hear like a traditional um, Geiger counter, you'll hear that like, like clicking, static key clicking noise. And that's basically what that is. Yeah, I'll link a video down below to a uh, like a science channel explaining how a, the, a Geiger counter works. Technically, it's a Geiger Mueller counter because uh, I believe the first person, the like the creator of it, his um, basically his uh, student, whose last name was Mueller. So the guy who created it, or who thought up of the idea and started creating it, was uh, a guy with the last name of Geiger. And then um, his student came along and basically like perfected it and finished his work. And his student's last name was Mueller. Mueller. So it got the last name Geiger Mueller. Anyways, let's actually turn this guy on. There, you can already hear it. So I already have it set up the way I wanted it. So here it does counts per minute, and then here it does micro sieverts per hour. Now, usually when you look up online, I've seen a lot of milli sieverts per hour. And basically, from what I remember, basically a thousand, uh, millisieverts is one microsievert but yeah so and actually it came with this simple guide telling you um what levels are like dangerous slash what levels are like not nothing to be worried about where i live usually the background is about 16 counts per minute but i will show you the reason i bought this guy in the first place the reason I got a Geiger counter in the first place is that I wanted to see how radioactive the few radioactive mineral specimens I do have in my collection. Starting off, got a uranite specimen from Cardiff Mine in Wilberforce, Ontario. It's this kind of dull gray cube crystal here that's in a calcite matrix that seems to also have some floor appetite. You can see that green stuff there and then some like really dark uh, purple fluorite. Now the other ones, the other mineral specimens, these all come from the barrel pit. I'll uh, put a link in the description below to that video. That was last year I went to the barrel pit. This is a specimen of alanite and this one's interesting because it also has some zircons in there. If you can see where my thumb is pointing, that orange kind of uh, hexagonal-ish crystal is actually a zircon. I uh, found this out because I didn't know what it was, and some a subscriber and viewer of my channel and a local Ontario rock hound, they are a very knowledgeable person, and they pointed out, hey, if you shine it with UV light, the zircons from the barrel pit should fluoresce orange, and sure enough, those fluoresced orange on the specimen. The alanite from the barrel pit is kind of like this dull black, uh, platy mineral. Up next is all the yuxinite specimens that I collect from the barrel pit. Now, the yuxinite from the barrel pit is very... It, it, if you see it, like if it's broken and kind of fractured and stuff, it is very shiny, like very dark. If you get these whole crystals, that the outside of the crystals tend to be a little less shiny. Um, though sometimes there's a bit of damage and you'll see the shiny parts on them. This one is a smaller guy and you can see actually the felt spar that these guys are in. It's kind of a, for the barrel pit, the indicator that you're in the radioactives is if the felt spar has kind of turned like this burnt red. 
There's another small Yuxanite crystal. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the best one. Very nice, decent sized Yuxanite crystal that has very, basically no damage on the bottom. Uh, it basically seems to have just fallen off of the Feldspar matrix that it was growing on. And it's well formed, you can see it. Um, the issue with Yuxanite sometimes, because of, uh, from what I understand, because of its radioactivity, it can kind of like struggle to form, it'll kind of break down and stuff. But yeah, uh, now that I've kind of shown you the mineral specimens, let me uh, put the Geiger counter on them. So right now I have the counter on my Uranite specimen. Um, it seems to read about 520-ish to five, 550 counts per minute is about the highest I've seen with this specimen, um, which is about, what, 3.2, uh, even just touching it and moving it farther away from the source brings down the counts a lot. Um, that's the one negative about these, uh, this specific type of Geiger counter, this brand, is that they seem to be a bit slow from my understanding. And if you shift them a lot, the count goes all over the place. But like 3.2 micro sieverts per hour. Put in perspective, uh, one CAT scan is um, usually about 10 to 20 millisieverts per hour is... Uh, 10,000 micro sieverts to 20,000 micro sieverts per hour, which is so the, the uh, to point it, yes, it's radioactive, but am I in clear danger? No, if I, you know, handle these properly, don't lick the dust off of my fingers, you know, wash my hands, keep them in a keep them in a stored container that is like you know, lined with some lead tape or something like that. I should be more than safe to uh, have these in my collection. An interesting thing actually about uranite while we're here, uranite was actually the main source of like radioactive source that the kind of the pioneer of radiation studies, Marie Curie, um, somebody who, if you know anything of a kind of about the history of about radioactiveness, you know that she was a scientist that studied radioactivity early on and actually she used uranite as her main source to make radium. She did a lot of studies with radium and unfortunately she died because of that, because of her studies with radioactivity. And so here's my large chunk of yuxanite. Now it doesn't seem to be as radioactive as uranite. A little history on yuxanite. So Yuxanite is an, well, history, more uh, some interesting facts about Yuxanite. So its name actually comes from the ancient Greek word being to mean um, to be friendly to strangers, basically. I think that's the rough translation of the Greek word Yuxanite gets its ent etymological source from, basically. And the reason it's named that is because it takes all these, like, leftover rare earth elements in the surrounding environment and incorporates it into its structure. Or at least that's, from my cursory understanding, that's, that's what it does, and that's why it's named that. And sometimes it's named also, it has the nickname the junk mineral because it takes all the leftovers that are in, in the environment still. Here's the alanite specimen. Now this is interesting. So alanite is actually only radioactive if um, uranium or thorium is present from what I understand. Now compared to my yuxtonite specimens and my uranite specimen, as you can see, it's not as re it's not as radioactive, which kind of indicates that either it has very low amounts of uranium or thor thorium in it, or um, the uranium or thorium that was present in it has uh, decayed over time and is no longer present, and so it's not releasing as much radiation because ra radiation is the decay of the basically the radiation that we measure is 
from what I understand, is caused by the decaying of those radioactive elements and minerals. So slowly over time, they're not going to be there anymore. That's why when you listen to stuff, people will mention the half-life of radioactive material. That basically means, like, how long does it take for it to basically lose half of its radioactiveness? Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm probably wrong. Uh, radioactive minerals are not exactly my strong point. But as you can see, this one, even if we were to consult this chart, we know the background radiation in this area is about 16 C uh, counts per minute. And sitting right on top of this mineral specimen, we're not even breaching 100. It's kind of interesting to see the difference. So my uranite specimen is a lot hotter than this alunite specimen. And then my yuxinite specimens are kind of in between. And uh, to, to finish off, I'll give you a little blurb about alunite. It was named after Thomas Allen, I believe, who, from what I remember correctly, is a famous Scottish mineralogist, and it was discovered in the early 19th century. And that's about it, sorry. Yuxinite was kind of the more interesting mineral with its etalomological... Etilomog I can't say that word. Anyway, we have gotten to the end of the video. I want to thank you guys for watching. If you like this type of stuff, please do like and subscribe if you haven't already. I do all kinds of rock hounding, arrowhead hunting, lapidary and flint napping related videos. So if that's your cup of tea. Also, I do some fossil collecting. I really do enjoy fossil collecting. So if those are the things you enjoy, then please consider subscribing and liking this video. Please uh, uh, mention in, let's say in the comments below, what was your favorite fact that I let you guys know about? Uh, I did kind of pack this one full of some interesting uh, kind of facts and also some interesting history. So let me know what you found the most interesting. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.